girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hot Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. Carlos Goshen, the Nissan, the deposed Nissan man. The Nissan has filed a 10 billion yen. Yen, yeah. That's about 91 billion greenbacks. They filed this suit for charges and damages Carlos inflicted on the company aw, before he took it on the lam. <laughs> Stay tuned. You know what? they got to find him first. It's the old Carlos says, catch me if you can. Come and get me. I, if you can find me. And, you know, just when I thought the UAW scandal couldn't get any more interesting. This is probably my top story of the day, and it makes me makes me a little leery, makes me a little ill, to be honest with you. Former UAW Regional Director Vance Pearson has pleaded guilty to conspiring with at least six other UAW officials to embezzle union funds and other racketeering activity. Nothing new, you say? Well, seems Pearson who could receive a sentence of up to 30 months in prison and a $250,000 fine, is cooperating with authorities. Unlike others before him, Pearson is on record saying that there is a huge story to tell. Pearson's lawyer is on record saying that there's a huge story to tell and my client intends to tell it all. Ouch, somebody's singing like a canary. Now, you and I both know this cooperation is intended, of course, to obtain a softer sentence and maybe a lower fine. But I got to tell you guys, this is going to blow this debacle sky high. I mean sky high. Just when the UAW is trying hard to organize its first import manufacturing plant, the one down in Tennessee there, that Chattanooga Volkswagen plant, because there are no organized import plants. This is more than a setback. This might be a deal breaker. This might be really bad. Listen, if you haven't got anywhere to go for uh, Valentine's Day yet, guess what? Blue Top. Blue Top's got a couple of free shakes for dates. Oh, yeah. And they got you know, pink shakes, of course. And good stuff going. And they got all kinds of specials for, for Valentine's Day. I'm taking you, she who will be obeyed on Saturday because tomorrow's is going to be way too cold for her to go out. Trust me. She'll just say, no, I'm staying in. So we're going to do that. We're going to go there on Saturday and get a have a nice Valentine's dinner. It's going to be a lot of fun. Big and good cooking. Oh, man, he's he, for the winter time. John is in that kitchen just firing up some real good stuff. Also, I got to tell you, and I don't give shout outs very often, but I do every so often. And I met a guy today, and he owns a, a beauty salon in Sauk Village. He's a new customer of mine, drives a Hummer, by the way. And, boy, they're a stinker to get parts for. He uh, His name is Bill Owl. And he has a beauty salon in Sauk Village. It's called Drip. Uh, yeah, it's called Drip. But you never know who you're going to run into at this beauty salon. Uh, Bilal and the girls have a really big-time business going out there. they got cars and people everywhere out there. you just hard to get in and out. They do everything. It's a beauty, beautiful beauty salon, uh, multi-sex, multi-racial, whatever, ethnic. They do everything. And they are really sharp. And get one of his customers... Kaylee Mack from the Bears drives all the way out to Sauk Village to get his hair cut. Think about that. He's an old buddy of Bill Al's from Chicago, I'm sure. And the girls do a great job. I mean, I, it's just a nice place to visit. My, I'm going to probably stop out there maybe for my next haircut, but I don't know if they'll have any trouble giving me the GI issue haircut. I mean, anybody can cut that. I'm not looking for anything special, you know. Uh, you can do it yourself. I actually Sandy I, can I, do it for you. Or no, she be obeyed. I would never get I would never let her behind me with a pair of shiny things sharp. I could do it for you. You either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I I'll stick with my barber, thank you. Or one of the girls from Drip. That would be that would be fine with me. Oh yeah, this is going to be a fun. I hope you're ready for tomorrow. It's supposed to get nice and cold <laughs> and Friday. Friday is going to be a stink pot. It's going to be really cold. Coldest day of the year. Hope that, that windshield solvent, you hope you bought it from a part store like Bumper to Bumper Auto Value, where they have the good stuff that won't freeze on you. Hope your antifreeze is good. I mean, I hope you checked all that. I've been telling you about it for weeks and months, and I hope we just did it all. I'm glad, I'd be glad if you did. I have a feel-good story for this week. It takes place in Spring Hill, Tennessee. 
kind of cool. At the General Motors engine plant that has been shuttered since the Great Depression of 2009, when GM actually collapsed, and they had an uncertain future, at least they said they did. They had way too much money in the bank to be uncertain, believe me. Now, if FCA Chrysler did that, that'd be another story, because they're kind of, you know, or if it was Mazda or Mitsubishi, then you'd know they were going. But these guys, GM, but they didn't collapse. They made it out fine. But that plant has been shut down. That engine plant has been shut down in Spring Hill, Tennessee since then. Well, now a decade later, the plant and its workers are busy building the next generation of GM's light truck engines with what they call the new global propul propulsion technology. Hello. Millions of dollars have been invested in the Spring Hill facility to reinvent the 6.2 and 5.3 V8 gas engines for the new technology, which, get, by the way, gets super mileage with this new global propulsion technology. After pouring nearly a billion dollars into engine development, General Motors spent another 27 million, in, uh, put another 27 million into the plant to assemble a right-hand drive vehicle to export to Australia called the Holden Acadia, along with dynamic engine technology. Oh, three cheers for Spring Hill, Tennessee. Everybody in town is back on the job. They're all working. That's, that whole town is just turned right around in 10 years. Thank God. Thank God for this new boost in car business, the car world that we have. I mean, it's pretty outstanding right now. Things are looking good. In a first-of-its-kind approval by U.S. regulators, the NHTSA, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, last Thursday gave permission to the autonomous startup company called Neuro Inc., N-U-R-O Inc., to deploy 5,000 low-speed electric vehicles over the next two years without human controls, like mirrors, steering wheels, pedals, you know, you name it. The rollout of the new Euro car, Neuro car, called the R2, will take place in Houston, Texas, with plans to deliver things such as groceries, pizzas, etc., food. The R2 is approximately half the width of a regular car and has no steering wheel or seats and sports gull wing doors. You know, like the, uh, the old Tesla, and not Tesla, the old uh, whatever, the, uh, back to the future car. And will be built at Neuro's company base in Mountain, Mountain Valley, California. Mountain View, California. P.S. Neuro is a privately owned robotics company and has identified their R2 vehicle, not as a vehicle, but as an electric delivery robot. You know what? Maybe, just maybe, taking Junior to all those robotic club meetings wasn't a waste of time after all. You think about it, okay? But they identify it as an electric de delivery robot. For what reason? Probably to get away from some of the state and low, uh, federal laws regarding autonomous driving. Think about that a minute. And they're low speed. So they're like, you know what? What are you going to do when one of these things, robots, let's call it a robot now because that's what they want it to be. They don't want it to be a car. They want it to be a robot. What's it going to be like when you get behind one of these in a 45 mile an hour zone and he's doing 10 on a two lane road? You've got to try and pass it with traffic coming. You're going to have a trail behind you of cars like you never saw before. And you know what? I don't know. Lows, <laughs> if you're going to have autonomous driving, it actually should adapt to the situation it's in and its surroundings. It should be, you know, adaptable. It should be, should be keeping up with traffic. The all new, all newly refreshed 2021 Chrysler Pacifica, the minivan designed by Chrysler to take the place of their uber popular Voyager in town and country will now offer four-wheel drive that will deliver 100% of the torque to the rear wheels, making it one of two minivans to offer all-wheel drive. That's true. Also, this will keep my friend Leighton happy. <laughs> Get this. They will still offer the stow-and-go second-row seat that folds into the floor of the van. Well, if the seats are up, she uses that compartment to hide her kids' Christmas presents from, the, from them so that they're literally 
sitting on their own Christmas gifts. <laughs> they don't know it. I think it's kind of cool. You know, it's, it's fun to fool the kids now, isn't it? Also, of course, the Pacifica will have the latest safety features we have been talking about for months. Blind spot mirrors, lane departure warning, an adaptive cruise control that can literally bring the van to a complete stop. Pretty cool. That's probably the highlight of the show this year. Believe it or not, a Chrysler Pacifica minivan? Ah, I wish I would have gone because I'm sure I would have found a lot more better highlights. I know I would have. Especially in the electronic car and the autonomous driving stuff. They featured a lot of stuff. They had a test track and everything this year. It was pretty cool, actually. The 2021 Atlas Volkswagen, Volkswagen's largest van, got even larger this year. About three inches longer to improve interior comfort. Doesn't sound like much, but you wouldn't believe what that makes. And it has an 8-inch infotainment touchscreen in the dash that features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability. <laughs> they got it all, like Bogey and Bacall. The 2020 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid will now sport a power plant that boasts 52 miles per gallon, making it as efficient as the Toyota Prius, a whopping improvement of about 10 miles per gallon over the Hyundai on the Hyundai. Also, believe I'll get this, a roof solar panel that can add energy both to the 12 volt battery and the hybrid system will account for about 700 extra miles of free driving every year. 700 miles of free driving every year with the roof solar panel. The Sonata can now go 680 miles on a single tank of fuel with the hybrid system working in the battery charge and the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if all, all, all things being considered and in their right place. The brand new 2020 Genesis. Genesis is the hybrid, not the hybrid, it is the high-end model of the Hyundai. This is like uh, Toyota uh, has Lexus and Honda has Acura and Nissan has Infiniti. Well, not to be outdone, Hyundai has Genesis. And the, the brand new 2020 Genesis GV80. Why do they do that? Why do they have all the have to make it so complicated? Why can't they just call it a Sonata? <laughs> the GV80 it made its North American debut at the Miami Auto Show last week. Is the first crossover by Hyundai's luxury brand. With its quilted leather interior, hello, and 14.5 inch infotainment screen, whoa, that is controlled by a dial in the wood grain console. Ugh. It will offer a four cylinder turbo and a V6 twin turbo and an eight speed automatic transmission with four wheel drive available. So it's not a van, it's a, it's a crossover, but guess what? Whew. You're talking about that V6 turbo, twin turbo, that's gotta cook. That's got to really cook. I, well, if you can, if you can afford the high-end model, the high, the high-money model, I guess you can afford gas. I guess that's the way it is. 